they don't tell you that what's more likely going to happen is you go and you try to water them consistently, and then some of them just start to die, and other <laughs> ones are fine. And then you mm -hmm. have to ask yourself, like, what's possibly wrong? Alex, as you may be aware, I uh, like myself a farming sim once in a while. Sure, I I can get behind a farming game once in a while. I think we have different styles of farming games we like. Yeah, I, I think you, I like more of like the life farming sims, the uh, the Stardew Valleys and the the harvesty moons. Well, not which really are not the kind moons. I typically. <laughs> No, you like farming, I like farming simulator. simulator. But at the same time, I will say I have talked with, with Crave about this several times. Farming Simulator would benefit from having a fucking storyline. Yes, he <laughs> sure would. It because sure would. I, I think we've talked about this before as well. I don't like sandbox games. I don't mind sandbox games. Mm. But I don't like it if the only goal in a sandbox game is like there's no there's no penalties. Right. You know, it's just make as much of whatever currency or whatever as you want. There are no goals. There's no thing you can do. Like, there's no end goal. There's no story. There's just you do what you want and you do it. And there's not really the only thing holding you back, like in Farming Sim, is oh, I want this new tractor, but I need to make enough money to buy the tractor. Let's just farm until I make the money to get the tractor and then I can do more farming. Right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's an infinite money loop, and eventually yeah. even ones with stories uh, will will kind of, like, in endgame, become that, uh, you know, production farms. On that note of having a storyline, like, I do like actually having storyline and having towns and people that exist and having more of a, a world that is built around the idea of uh, of the farm but what i have started to realize you know as i also do gardening myself and you know try to raise crops in my backyard is that um none of these games actually prepare you for actually farming uh in the real world uh they they don't really uh give you a realistic interpretation of uh farming like uh yeah like for instance um in the the typical game that you go through the idea is that you you plant all of your little plants in the ground and then you water them and if you water them every day they're all going to come up at the same time and and you've succeeded and now you can harvest every one of your crops they they don't tell you that what's more likely going to happen is you go and you try to water them consistently and then some of them just start to die, and other <laughs> ones are fine. And then you mm -hmm. have to ask yourself, like, what's possibly wrong? At no point in, like, Stardew Valley, or really any of these games that I've played, do they ever kind of go, hey, what's your soil quality like? What's the nutrients that you're using? Do you have pests? Are, it, are there spots on the plants that are causing causing it to wilt? Is it actually waterlogged? Have you watered it too much? <laughs> How's your drainage? Is it loamy soil or sandy soil? <laughs> How much light are you getting? What's the pH level there? Like, what? You know, I feel like you need one of those more in-depth simulation farming games. Yes, I need a backyard garden simulator where they actually get I, into I the assume... weeds. I literally into the weeds. I yes. assume one of those more like grow your own marijuana simulator games might have this in-depth thing. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm trying to think. I think the closest I ever saw was, what was it, 100 Days? Did yeah. you ever play? Which was the winemaking. I, yeah. I, play, I finished that one. Yeah, it, it wasn't very long. Um, no. <laughs> no, the storyline ends very quickly. You can play beyond it, but uh, in that, though, they do tell you a little bit about uh, different diseases that your plants can get and ways that you can protect against it and stuff like stuff like that. And the heat, the temperature and stuff can affect it. Mm. The, the terrain of the, uh, the world where you're growing your grapes can affect it. But... Um, not in, not in like the actual down to the basics, because like I have whole bins that I've I built, and I'll put tomatoes in in there, and 
I'll have five tomatoes, and three of them will look terrific, and the other two have pretty much wilted to to dust, and they're mm-hmm. in the same place, and and in the same soil, in the same area, and I don't I don't know why, like. <laughs> You're, you're probably the same way, and they're they're just some of them just decided no, not today. Sorry, yeah, can't help you. Um, where I'll have plants that were doing really great, and they were super happy, and I changed nothing about how I cared for them, and all of a sudden they've just decided to wilt. They just no. they've decided to fall over, and they don't want to play this game anymore before they've done anything. Uh, I've had. I've had ones where I've moved them to different locations, thinking that they could get more sun or more heat in certain areas, and uh, they just keep saying nope. I just I've given up. Like the plants have just given up on you. Uh, that they'll they'll have too much sun, too little sun. They've gotten too shady. Uh, there's not enough heat. There's not enough light. There's uh, you know, uh, and then you say to yourself, oh cool. Well, I'll, I'll put a lot more. Look, I just drench it full of water, and then I'll put more fertilizer in it, and it's gonna be terrific. And then the plant goes, "No, actually, I like that less. Please don't do that anymore." And you don't understand. Yeah, it's almost like plants are temperamental. Plants can be temperamental, uh, especially after like you get a really heavy rain, because as we talked about on the last episode, we've been getting some very heavy rains, and some it's of the rain. plants, some of the plants love it. And they just spurt right up and they're happy as can be. And then other plants decide that it's a wonderful time to just die. They just die. <laughs> like, like some kind of condition is not being met. And when you do actually get into the, you know, the literal weeds of gardening, you realize that there's all of these different things that you have to be accounting for. Uh, from like the the quality of the soil to the nutrients in the soil and and the the actual acidity of the soil and how much light they're all getting and protecting them from uh, various critters, which I've now put a giant fence around my whole garden, trying to keep out the deer, because when I used to have healthy plants, the deer came along. I never had the thing in those games where the deer just randomly come through and decide I'm going to eat half of your crops. Yeah, um, I feel like you could make a whole game out of just gardening for realsies. Yeah, you really mm-hmm. could. You well, could. A lot of games that have gardening or farming make it a lot more simplified. Yeah, they you know? do. They do. I think they try to touch on some of this. Like, I remember in Stardew Valley there is a thing where if you don't put out scarecrows in certain areas, the, the little crows will come down and occasionally eat some of your seeds and then you'd have to regrow them. But nothing prepares you for the moment where you go out into your garden and you've put this giant fence and all these obstacles in the way so that the deer can't get in. And and then something has still eaten the tops of all of your squash. Like, what did that? Yeah, some bug. Something Mm. decided to lop off the uh, leaves and eat them all. And... And where'd they go? And how'd that happen? What did that? You know, these are questions that I would actually really love it if there was some game that could explain to me what the hell's going on and how you could fix it. Give me that game. I need a garden game where I can literally just plant the individual plants and then there's just random things that happen to them and then it explains how you solve the problem. That would be very educational for me. So, what we need is educational garden game. Yes. But also, like a deep sim, like not a life sim, like not a job sim, like a deep simulation gardening game. Yes. We need to call it Deep in the Weeds. Deep in the Weeds. There we, we go. We need to call it Deep in the Weeds because yeah. there's so many ways you can take that and it's perfect for this game. And yes. what it is, is it teaches you actually how to garden. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you can do this. It's one of those, it's, it's almost like an idle game mm. at this point, because what you have to do is come back every day and play it. <laughs> right, right. You have to be on a schedule. It has to be, it has to almost be like the mobile game schedule in order for it yeah. to work. Uh, but it can't, the problem is that they'll never make it because you can't do that thing where you monetize it out with a premium currency so that it just auto fixes you, you your can. plans. 
you can you premium currency currency sell misters and things oh, like that that will water your plants yeah for you on a yeah basis. Oh, no <laughs> what have we done no we've created the next monster what have we done um, okay. but i think i think the reason that a lot of games skimp out on these more in-depth mechanics yeah if you will um is because i feel like most people who don't want to actually garden but want to play a game about gardening don't want to have to deal with checking the ph and, and basis uh, value of their soil and checking out the nutrient levels of their phosphorus and nitrogen and yeah. they don't want to take out fertilizer and mulch and they don't want to be checking like oh my my thing's getting eaten what's eating the leaves is it june bugs is it ladybugs is it deer yeah yeah what's eating a lot of blueberries is it a bear that came along and was like oh blueberries you know? yeah 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 the bear just came through and decided oh those look tasty now what are we gonna do uh yeah yeah I, I keep trying to figure this stuff out in real life and i think that it would be a very interesting game it, you have to think of it as um garden game but on survival mode where it literally is like trying to figure out how to make these things the these things grow. garden survival garden survival yeah where the goal of the game is to make your garden survive yes 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 we can create a whole new genre but then if you want to make it even more uh something that's pertinent you also need your garden to survive so that you can have food to survive yourself Oh, yeah, because you, you only have so many rations, and you're going to start to... Feast eat. or famine. Feast Means. or famine. There you go. Yep. Good. You know what we end up doing? We just... Planting we... potatoes. Uh, I was going to say mushrooms. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, they're not even plants at that point. No, there's... <laughs> no, but you still need to get right conditions and time, times yes. a year and stuff in order to, to make those work, you know? Yeah. They're still temperamental. I kept thinking yeah. about doing stuff like that, but the, the problem is, is that, again, you need to have the right kind of wood for them to grow on, you need to have the right kind of moisture content, they need a lot of shade, they need to have underbrush, they need to, some of them grow in the ground, some of them grow on stumps. So, yeah, uh, I mean, just, you have to pick what food you're going to do, and then you have to make it work. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a... I think the reason why they don't do this in a lot of games, too, is because there is a certain level of complexity that most people don't want to get into when they're playing a game. Um, there is a, a certain surface level of mechanics that you can get through that you can deal with on a day-to-day -day basis when you are playing a game, but when you get any deeper than that, where we have to really start looking at all of these factors, I know it has a tendency to make me tune out because uh, you know i've played like crusader kings when you start getting into the myriad of different mechanics um it just becomes a blur for most people uh, you have to know how to implement them you need to know how to introduce them over the course of time um i think that the one nice thing though with our you know feast or famine uh that we're going with here the one nice thing is that there is a an order of operation to it like you can start very simply about like the process of actually planting your seeds in the ground and then after a couple days another issue arises and you introduce a new mechanic and that comes up and then a couple days later another mechanic comes up <laughs> when you start to wonder hey why is it that i just planted another real world thing by the way why is it that i i got this bed together and i planted a bunch of seeds and only two of like the twelve seeds came up. Yeah. Out of that, now you can I mean, ask you do those is questions. You have a game where it's it's like a simple Stardew Valley type game. It's like oh yeah, plant a garden, and so you go and you take the seeds and you plant it in the soil. Yeah. And then you water it and you come back, and you come back and you come back and you go, why isn't it growing? And it goes, you just put the seeds in the soil. <laughs> yeah. It's like you didn't check the pH level. You didn't do this, that, or the other thing. Did yeah. you? Did you remember to get your seeds to sprout first? <laughs> right, right. Did you remember that you're actually uh, those are supposed to actually soak in water for 24 hours before you actually put them in the ground? Did you know that? Did you think about yeah. that? No. Did you think about that? And it's like, no, I didn't. So oh. it's like it makes it seem like the game is going to be 
about more than just farming or gardening, but then it's like, no, no, we're doing in-depth, in-depth gardening. Yeah, this is, this is punishing gardening. Sorry, sorry, folks, this is the real deal. <laughs> we're, we're getting down <laughs> And what they eventually do is, like, kind of go, oh, I guess we gotta start raising calves so we have manure so that we can place the manure. manure in the ground. What, what you end up doing is trying to raise a, as many goats as you possibly can, because they'll weed the garden and then also give you fertilizer <laughs> in pelletized form. All sorts of wonderful things. Then you actually have a real farming simulator. There you go. Folks, we gotta do that, because uh, as far as I remember... Farming simulator doesn't really do that. They mostly like say, "Here's the crops you can put in," and they added some more realistic things in there. Uh, at some point, I don't remember exactly what it is. It has to do with like the something. I don't know. I don't look into it. agricultural stuff that you can measure, but like I didn't. Okay. Look into it yet? I haven't played in a little while, so. Sure, sure. Uh, most again, it's it's the point of. Wow, this game is really fun occasionally until it's really boring. Until it's really boring, right. Um, uh, well, I mean, we could we could theoretically, in this uh, garden game that we're putting together, uh, we, could, we could put a storyline. Uh, that whole thing about, like, you literally uh, have to do it to survive. Like, uh, we're, we're playing Castaway. Farm Core. Farm Core. Yep. We're going to create a new genre at the end of this all. Uh, but I guess uh, my takeaway is just uh, real life farming is different than game farming, and I'm sure that we could say that about almost every single genre of game. Uh, real life is not the same as gaming, folks, uh, and there's a lot of factors that you don't account for when you're playing. <laughs> so. Uh, if anyone out there happens to know of a game that might be like the one we're talking about, please let me know so that I can be directed to it and try it out. Tell us what you'd like to see in a gardening game uh, that actually makes you hate the idea of gardening. <laughs> this is... You know what we've created? We've created Fear and Hunger, but as a garden game. <laughs> there you go. Liter literally uh, Fear and Hunger, but uh, but as a gardening game. It's great. It's an immersive sim now. <laughs>